to thank every man that left me. I would have never been alone this long. <laughs> and, and really got to know myself. I, I feel that as young women, we're devoting ourselves to this programming of love. And the truth is you gotta love everything, not the poor guy that you, <laughs> that you decided to hook up with. I have to thank this lady is projecting more than a drive-in movie theater and those aren't tears of joy trust me i get what you're saying self-love is important but i think this is the result of a lot of modern females out there who end up giving their bodies away to men who don't deserve it this is the end result of said choices ladies be careful it's wild out there before and I've said to men, men, stop approaching women. Stop it. I agree. 2023. Stop it. Stop approaching women. Do not go up to them. When you go outside, do not entertain them. A woman, see, women can let you know if they're interested in you. I don't believe in that one when a woman's walking past, you should just try to grab. First of all, never touch a woman. That's not your woman. Don't even touch her. True. Yeah, well, 2023. This is how you catch a case, right? <laughs> no, I'm, like, true. like, like, what is my advice going to be to men and young men, especially at work? I've said before, do not speak to no women at work because what Pearl proved is, what one man is creepy, but another man actually is not so creepy, yeah, right? It comes to crush, right? No, still, but, but, yeah, but so if a guy moves to you at work and you don't like him, it becomes, oh, work, workplace misconduct. But yeah. if you find him cute, you're not complaining. I think that it's 100% the women's fault. 100%. Because it's like, all right, all right. You, you put a piece of meat in front of a tiger. You can't be mad he ate it. You put the piece of meat right in front of him. Now, I know everyone will say, Pearl, don't control, compare women to me. But I will. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> now, yeah, because men are in control of relationships. Women are in control of sex. So we pick who we sleep with. Men who pick who they wife. All my life, I've been complaining that no guys like me. Sorry, let me rephrase. No guy that I like liked me back. Okay, but tell me why I finally found a guy who liked me back. Which, okay, wait, 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 wait. I met this guy who I thought was attractive, right? And he also thought I was attractive. And then so I got his IG and we went on like dates. <clears throat> um, Cody's here with me, so. <laughs> hey! It went really well. The dates went really well. We went on like several too. But tell me why, tell me why I didn't feel anything. What is wrong with me? Like, what is wrong with me, Cody? <laughs> I finally found a guy that liked me back and I don't like him Recently learned about like attachment styles and I think I found out that I am a fearful avoidant A fearful avoidant is when you want intimacy, but you fear it But like a lot of my friends tell me that I just like haven't found the right guy It's okay guys. I don't believe in love anyways, so I am happily single. I couldn't be any happier. Yeah! What a cope at the end. The guy obviously wasn't toxic enough to keep her on a string. Or he's an introverted chill dude that doesn't want to entertain a woman, as many strong men aren't jesters as women expect. Most women I meet can barely hold a conversation, have no hobbies, and lack critical thinking. What is there to talk about? On top of that, many women think men should entertain them 24-7, or they lose interest. But hey, she's happily single, right? What's your biggest pet peeve when it comes on to texting? If I don't text her back fast enough, she will say, who are you texting? And that's my pet peeve, because I'm, I'm, I'm fucking doing something that I'm busy with, so that's my pet peeve. Do you think that's like an insecurity, or where could that stem from? No, I'm just like, she's can I cuss? Say anything you want to. I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm number one priority. Period. Point blank. But she also wants me to pay for everything, so... You're his number one priority, or you believe you should be. What number priority is she actually in reality? Two. Two. She's, up to, she's in the Two. top three. She's in the top three. She's at least I'm top yeah yeah three. no she's you're in the top what do you mean you said two that's in the fucking middle of one two and three so I would be three I got a mom yeah mom is one that's fine yeah, mom is one until marriage which is appropriate I'm not married so. yet that's what I'm saying okay, that's so fine but why would you say top three I'm number two okay she's number two 
period. You can tell this guy is completely exhausted from this controlling, manipulating woman. He's over it. Anyone who's been in a relationship like that knows it's hard to get away from a crazy like that, but worth it in the end. They will suck you dry. And I don't mean that in a good way. Of your emotion, time, and energy. Just walk away, guys. It is not worth sacrificing your freedom and peace of mind. Guys, I need you to forward this to all the women in your life. Ladies, bear with me. One thing that I had to learn about men is that when they are listening to your story, they want the point first. For example, John got fired from work today because he got caught laundering a million dollars. Versus, oh my gosh, you know what happened to John today? Because then the time that we go from here, 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 we lost him. This technique guarantees that he's at least in for a good five to 10 minutes. He wants to know the drama. He just wants to get to the point. So give him the point first. I think everyone is like this at times, but it's certainly more popular in women. I think this is great advice for anyone though. Get to the point, use logic, not emotion, and move on. It really can be that simple. My cousin who is younger than me is getting married today. Meanwhile, I have credit card debt. I am in a toxic situation with one of my exes. Last week I was so broke that instead of getting an Uber to the airport, I had a random guy from Hinge drive me. And this year I have had chlamydia twice. So far. Happy wedding. Why do they think it's a good idea to broadcast this online? Is it just for attention and likes? And people wonder why men aren't interested in dating. Good grief. Misery really does love company. It's video after video of women losing their minds, bragging about disgusting things, and literally broadcasting their baggage on 500 different social media. Focus on your hobbies and passions, bros. I hate one man ask you on a date, and then as soon as you be like, oh, like, where are we gonna go? They'd be like, I don't know, up to you, whatever you wanna do. Bitch, you asked me on a date. Now you want me to plan it? You want me to open the doors too? You want me to fucking propose to you? Two sides to every coin. Some guys are interested in seeing your idea of fun, or any ideas you might have. Although I agree, if you ask a girl out on the date, you should be the one to plan it, regardless of how much you plan to spend. This situation really changed between a relationship and dating itself. Show off your hobbies on a date. If she ain't into it, it's an easy pass. A man needs to show a woman that he understands how big of a deal it is for her to give her body to him. Lately in our society, all it seems like is that it's just an expectation of her. Men are acting like just because they want it, they're entitled to it. They are not understanding what an intrusive experience it can be for a woman. No one is entitled to that. Women say things like this when they are trying to acquire the beta male's resources. In all reality, she has a body count over 20 by 25. Most women in modern society are busy selling their sexuality on OnlyFans or 20 other social medias as well. They want all benefits of misandry and female empowerment without any of the consequences. Nice guys are mostly misogynists covered. They lack self-awareness enough to understand that they're not actually nice. They're kind of being manipulative by concealing their actual intentions. They're literally girl bossing, gatekeeping, gaslighting. Like, that's what they're doing. That's not what misogynist means. However, I do agree, many nice guys play that card in a weak attempt to get women. They gaslight and manipulate to try and weasel their way into her panties. I've seen them move in on women, wives, girlfriends, pretending to be the nice guy. Even as men, you don't want these guys as friends as they are the first to backstab and play female manipulation games. Men should be strong and stern while respectful, but a nice guy never wins whether it be with women or business. The truth is when you're dating a girl that's very, very independent, she's probably always going to say no anytime you ask her, does she need anything? And as toxic as you may think that is, we all have our baggage. And then when you are in a relationship, you work through that trauma with that person if that's the person that you decided to be with. So if you want to help her to stop being so prideful in that sense, and yes, she needs to be working on her trauma too if she is overly independent. I have to say things for clarity. But anyways, if you feel like you want to do something for her, just do it. Take that initiative because when she sees you taking that initiative, it'll make her more comfortable and more trusting and she'll feel like she can depend on you a little bit more. And just for clarity, independence is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But too much of anything can become a bad thing. These women want you to be the dad, aka breadwinner, while doing the dishes and laundry. They want it all while you become their psychiatrist. 
How about we don't take on all your baggage and find someone younger that doesn't carry all those problems? These women really are not worth the juice. And as other videos show, the single life is the only answer as they start their cat collection. Dating them is a 70 hour a week job, and ain't no one has time for that. Yet look at all these women in the comments expecting you to do all this work for some used up moldy cheese. Stop getting with broke men. Stop it! Stop it now! Oh, but he's really nice to you, and, and he listens? Oh. The Cheesecake Factory's not a date, but cheese- Oh, he only lives with his parents because he's saving money to buy an apartment. Okay. Stupid, stupid! He asked you to split the bill, and you agreed. Female humor isn't funny. Why do they think this goofy nonsense is funny? It's just clear misandry passed off as comedic genius. They expect a man's resources for bringing nothing to the table. Social media has really given these mids way too much narcissism. I believe it's called hoflation. Yet again, however, we see the clowns hooting and hollering in the comments. Amen. You go, girl. Preach. I feel like a big misconception that guys have is that if you are a pretty girl, that you are so preoccupied with so many men because you have so much love interest coming at you. I went on a date with a guy and he was like, oh, your inbox is probably flooded from guys that try to ask you out and hit on you. But the thing that guys need to realize is that women don't want to be for everybody. If they like a guy and they're trying to show interest in them, they're probably liking them and maybe a couple others if they're single and trying to date and see what's out there. But they're not entertaining everybody. Especially for me, there's a small select amount of men that I would actually consider. So even if my inbox is flooded from messages, which it isn't, wouldn't be entertaining all of it. This girl obviously hasn't been outside in a while, but most women do in fact want validation and attention from as many men as they can. Even if they are in a relationship, many women surround themselves with options and beta orbiters. Are there girls out there that think like this? Sure. But after looking at her profile, it's easy to see. She's a middle-aged corporate woman. And if it's not her need for validation and attention, It'll surely be her feminist girl power boss babe mentality that holds her back in the dating market. So a man recently told me that no man has ever looked at a woman and gone, damn, she's hot, wish she had longer eyelashes though. And I kid you not, I've been thinking about this for like three weeks. Like he's probably not wrong, but for the sake of the eyelash industry, we cannot let this get out. I know people that spend $500 a month getting their eyelashes done. There are kids that will starve if this industry collapses, but this man has just blown my mind. Most men don't care about all this fake stuff. In fact, we prefer girls that wear less makeup and a more natural look. It's rare, very rare. I meet a man that says he likes this stuff. A natural woman is always going to be more beautiful no matter what the random social media influencers say. It's insane to me these women are getting lip and butt injections, claiming it's for themselves. Women do it to themselves though, and from my research, people have died from those goofy butt implants. I have shared my husband with 16 people so far this year. I actually think I'm obsessed. I actually think I can't get enough. That's how obsessed I am. If you told me 12 months ago that I was going to be sharing my husband with multiple women, I would have been like, mm, no, that's a lie. So apparently it's not. And apparently it's a new thing that I just can't get enough of. And the funny thing about it is I am the one that is obsessed. Like my husband's like, yeah, cool. Like whatever. I'm like, no, this is a good idea. Like we should go do this. We should go do this. Oh, I've met her. We should go do her. And he just comes along for the ride and I absolutely love it. I'm pretty sure I enjoy the girls more than what he does. I mean, he's the bonus, but <laughs> I definitely enjoy it a lot more. And the cool thing is what we do for work, we obviously film it. Not all of them. We've had ones that we haven't filmed because it's just been us in our element. Um, but we've filmed most of them, which is really cool because we get to share that. And we get to watch it back over and over and over, which is really cool. But I still just can't get enough. I still feel like that I'm, we're like always on the prowl for the next person. <laughs> and now I'm kind of wondering, like, have I opened up a can of worms? Like, will this get worse? Will it ever stop? Who knows? Some guys might think this is great, but for me personally, I'm more traditional. I don't want to share my women with anyone. 
and I'd want that respect back. I think these modern ideas sound good on paper, and these delusional women spew them, but at the end of the day, it will end up destroying the relationship, not to mention the risk of STDs and unplanned pregnancies. There are too many variables that could cause issues inside the relationship. Not worth it if you have a good woman, which is rare enough as it is. How do you ask men for money without feeling that like this? Do you want to make me happy right now? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. I want to make you happy too. But later on, well, what do you want? Then whisper in his ear like this. I want you to take me to the ATM and give me as much money as you choose. It's kind of a kink. I just want to see what you're going to give. <laughs> it's simple. Okay, let's go. Then you're going to say, no, never mind. You're gonna tease them a little bit. You're gonna say, never mind. How about the next time we see each other, you just bring it to me? Did he already know he wants to do something because you just whispered in his ear and you know what that do. <laughs> Narcissism mixed with feminism and misandry is on full display on social media. If a man says something, he's banned, exiled, or socially attacked. Yet, these women can blatantly attack men and they get amens and love in the comments. The amount of delusional this middle-aged chub has, yet most likely has a hundred simps in her DMs, continues to validate her. As she ages, cats and government assistance will be her future. At least a few women called her out though. So I just tested Miss Sprinkle Sprinkle's advice. In short, it worked. Shira Seven said, when you go out, go out by yourself. I did, I went to the happy hour at a very wealthy, predominant place. In Philadelphia, I went to the Four Seasons, JG Sky High to be exact, at the time that she said, which is earlier than later. Literally, those men in there were on me like I was honey and they were bees. Now, she said to go by yourself because there were other girls that came as a group that was trying to do the same thing, baby. They didn't pay them no mind because that's intimidating. They didn't want to go up there to seven girls and then get let down. But me sitting at the bar by myself, whether you are just networking or going out there to freestyle, you need to get out your comfort zone and go to these happy hours in these places by yourself. I literally made connects with three people and my tab was paid. So there was literally nothing that I lost in this experience. Sprinkle, sprinkle, ladies. Well, we have seen it all. Pick up artists and fake gurus to now women teaching other women how to be thoughts and gold diggers. The amount of insane on social media grows by the day. And these same women wonder why they can't find a good man or love as they chase sprinkle sprinkles. The reality is most women in these places are escorts anyway. So all she's really saying is she's for the streets. Just like the gaggle of clowns in the comments. Right, so I've just turned 30 and I am single and I've always been single. Never had a partner, no one's ever asked me to be their girlfriend. And I shared some videos on this and it went viral because obviously there are so many people in the same position because I was like, is anybody else like this? And then loads of people were like, me too. And it's so funny the questions that you get asked when you've been single your whole life or have been single for a really long time. Like, oh my God, you must be the problem. Why have you not had a boyfriend? Why have you not had a girlfriend? Blah, 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 blah. And I think we should sort some, some kind of group. Like imagine the power of bringing all together the single people. Ladies, let me know. If you want me to create a community of us, of us single ladies, let me know because I've got some questions to ask you all. I need to share some experiences and I need some camaraderie to know that I'm not the only one experiencing this. What a nightmare. Also, maybe we can share horrendous dating stories because I've got a million. A million. And then we can start a commune if all of us stay single. The consequences of feminism are being shown in full force on all social media platforms. These women are growing older, single, alone, making little internet groups to validate their existence. It's a sad state in society, but these women are only doing it to themselves? When you go through the comments, you can clearly see almost every single one agrees and wants to join this group. Also, she claims she's never been in a relationship. So how can she share a million horrendous dating experiences? The math is not mathing. Babe, how come you have a list of like men's names in your phone? 
There's like a hundred in here. Oh, babe, don't look at that. It's um. Oh, so- you know what? Don't even say it. I know it. I it. You're planning our baby's names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I knew it. I knew it. And apparently, you're rooting for a guy because that's yeah. That's a lot of names. Oh, <laughs> looks like a lot of the names are repeated. Oh, that must be a mistake. They're, they're actually ranked. Okay, so you so you got favorites. Okay, so we got. Um, eight out of ten for Ethan. Okay, bet. Uh, seven out of ten for Ryan. Okay. Um, and then wet emoji out of ten for Jaquavius. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess we could talk about this, but you know, it's definitely not like, definitely not like a huge thing though. But yeah, that's that's actually wild though. Um, I don't know why you put wet emoji though. Now that I think about it, I, I guess that just means you really like it. But <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, but I'm glad you're planning for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Man. This is a skit, obviously, but there are plenty of videos out there of women doing exactly this. They keep a list of all the guys they've slept with, and it's usually over 20 by 25. They want men to value to their sexuality, while at the same time giving it away like gumballs out of a machine for a quarter. If you think these women don't come with baggage, you're crazy. They will always look back on that list and remember the good times they had, and she'll always remind you of that with her bad attitude, cheating, and countless beta orbiters. Women are not meant to be working these 40-hour-a-week corporate desk jobs. I'd like to piggyback off of that and say that in today's society, men are extremely misunderstood and they get a lot of hate, and I think that we should listen to them more. Most reasonable thing I've heard all day. You can clearly see how miserable women are, whether it be the antidepressant pill stats, loneliness, anger, misandry. It's all on display as women believe the lie of feminism. They were betrayed by the very idea that their liberation was real, while they simply destroy the nuclear family and became another corporate tax-paying citizen with no real benefit. A man should pay all the bills. No, thank you. No! Why not? Are you broke? Why should I pay for everything while you save all your money for yourself? Just say you're not a provider! Reverse psychology really is something, isn't it? If I'm gonna give you my love, then you need to give me your soul in U.S. dollars, minion! Well, wouldn't you also be getting my love in return? Who cares? I can get other guys! And I can get another woman with high value and self-respect. No! Wow, I'm gonna text you in two months saying I was wrong about everything, so be ready! Go away. This pretty much sums it up from those sprinkle-sprinkle type girls. They see no value in a man other than monetary gain and bring nothing to the table. These are the loudest women on social media spreading this nonsense, and it only increases the amount of single, lonely women. Their expectation is unrealistic, and social media hoflation mixed with feminism has destroyed society on a ridiculous level. Their narcissism, however, keeps them from ever seeing it. Ladies, have you ever wondered why some men choose Wonder Bread women over you? And when I say Wonder Bread, I'm just talking about girls who are a bit more plain, a bit more basic, average. And you, on the other hand, are like a divine French croissant and you're confused. You're like, I don't get it. Why are you going for Wonder Bread when I'm right here? There are three reasons why this happens and I'm gonna tell you exactly what they are. Starting with reason number one, Wonder Bread is cheaper, okay? You get a lot more value for basically half the price of a croissant. And even though some men might appreciate the way you look, they are gonna choose Wonder Bread because she doesn't require as much money or time to impress. Which brings me to reason number two, Wonder Bread will change herself for a man, a croissant will not, okay? Wonder Bread will become a grilled cheese, an avocado toast, a PB&J, any day of the week depending on what he wants. A croissant, on the other hand, it's kind of like take it or leave it, as in you might not be as willing to compromise or change your lifestyle for a guy. And the third reason is Wonder Bread is less maintenance, okay? Wonder Bread, you break it apart, there are no crumbs. With a croissant, a lot of crumbs, and some guys honestly don't want to deal with it. But here's the thing, the people that like croissants love croissants, and they don't even look at Wonder Bread. So don't try to change yourself, but instead embrace all of your flaky French layers because the right person is going to adore them. Follow for more and good luck. This woman is below average, yet she thinks she's some high-value 10-10 beautiful woman. She's barely mid. I don't know why these women invent all these goofy phrases to validate their delusional mentalities. They all think they have great advice, yet they are single, childless, have no husband, and are 40. They just need to quietly sit down and stop spewing nonsense. See, I hate to be a I told you so ass bitch, but didn't I tell y'all to never help a man when he down because all he gonna do is resent you for it later on? All he's gonna do is feel emasculated. 
And now we're seeing that shit unfold with Kiki Palmer and her baby father. Didn't I tell y'all that he was a bum on the podcast? Didn't I say that? I told y'all that he was a bum and she was doing everything for him. And that never works out. It never works out in the woman's favor because when you do everything for a man, you make more money than him, you put him on, you give him a job, whatever you do. When you help a man when he's down, when he get back up, all he's going to do is resent you for helping him out and he's going to feel emasculated. And an emasculated man is a dangerous man because now he got to do something to show his masculinity. He going to cheat or he going to put his hands on you. I'm telling you. And now we see it all unfolding with Kiki Palmer and her boyfriend. I told y'all that he was a bum. I told y'all that she did that. She put that that boy up. I told y'all this. I, I, and I'm not saying, oh, I told you, I told, you know, I, I said it. But I'm just saying, like, this is a perfect example why you never help a man when he's down. Because he will resent you for it later on and show his ass. What? These women base their entire life philosophy is based on some random scripted TV show or celeb life. It's rare you meet a man that is not thankful for help. Emasculated for being helped? This doesn't even meet basic critical thinking standards, camouflaged by misandry and hate. Never help a man, good grief. You know this chick is angry and single. Marriage rate is raising a lot of questions right now. A new study says the reason fewer people are getting married is because there's a shortage of, quote, economically attractive men. A study from Cornell University says women aren't getting married because prospective husbands can't provide enough financial security. You're Think about the lifestyle that you want to live when it comes down to vacations and how many kids you want to have. Well, I guess I wouldn't be contributing financially. I don't want any of my income to be needed in the family 300,000 like I guess if they made less than that I feel like we wouldn't have the lifestyle I wanted so I would work right five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> is that bad okay but what do you think the median income is forty five thousand dollars oh my god men who like to go overseas to find a partner is men who like to prey on vulnerable women my husband needs to be making 650000 650, Ladies, have you ever realized that the man that you're dating is the person in your life that you disrespect the most? You don't disrespect your parents because you want to keep your family. You don't disrespect your bosses or your coworkers because you want to keep your job. You don't even disrespect the friends who you talk shit about behind their backs because you want to keep the friendship. Yet you have no problem treating the man you claim to love as an emotional punching bag. Why is that? I can understand that in a relationship, there are going to be constructive times where you're forced to contend with each other. And this isn't to say that you don't also do good things for him or have some respect for him. But the next time you find yourself giving him the silent treatment, sarcastically agreeing with him when he tries to make a point to you, laughing off things that are serious to him as though he's ridiculous for taking them seriously, or turning the tables and making things about him when he's trying to make a request of you, ask yourself if you would do this with any other person in your life or if you would be a more respectful adult. I've said it a million times before, men need respect way more than they need love. So if you want to see an immediate improvement in your relationship, eliminate the disrespect. There's really nothing to add here. He hits the nail on the head on every point. Women will bow down to their corporate careers, but if their man asks them to do something or dress a certain way, they are controlling and manipulative or misogynist. Women can also get away with treating most men like trash, so they do. They know most men will simp to keep her around. It makes no sense until you see them single and alone in old age. Women will go out here and let a nigga f*** them raw without putting no ring on it, nothing. But you draw the line and making a sandwich for a man. What in the f*** is going on? Y'all, watch this. I had to sit down there with me, but I didn't even, like, ask him because he has a game. Like, I don't really care. And I didn't know I was going to be cold, you know? I would have wore more clothes, wore socks, like... I didn't know, but I didn't even want to wake you up because I knew he had a game. Like, I don't care. Like, that's the thing. I don't care. See, and just for just for her doing that, that's the, like, that just shows you how much, like, I appreciate her and how much she appreciates me and how much she values me as, you know what I'm saying? Like, she knew I had a big game that morning, and she decided that <laughs> she wanted me to sleep in my bed by myself and get some good sleep, and I really appreciate her. But from now on... Bro, these are the literal type of dudes I be trying to tell y'all to stay away from. If you haven't seen that video, let me give you some backstory. So the girl, the girl in the video next to the guy, go five hours to go see her boyfriend, to go visit her boyfriend, like, at his college, I'm guessing. The whole controversy of the video came from the fact that in the middle of the night, someone came, like, one of the RAs came and was like, she can't be in there because visitation hours are up. I think the visitation hours were from, like, 2 to 7. And apparently he had, like, a big football game the next day. 
So my good sis did some ride or die shit and went to go sleep in her car in 45 degree weather. She said she was shivering, she was uncomfortable, and she didn't sleep. And the worst part is he physically walked her to the car, left her there, and then went back to his dorm. Then the next morning got up and went to his game. Uh, he let this girl sleep in a cold car outside of his dorm while he slept cozily in the bed. Basically, people were just saying like, oh, that's off. Like he should have went in the car or whatever. And then this is the apology video or like him acknowledging what he did wrong, which I respect. But I don't know. To me, the video was just very side eye-ish for me. Like, I don't know. It felt like he was more so clearing his name rather than being genuinely apologetic. But yeah, what do y'all think? I mean, driving five hours, knowing these rules exist in the dorm isn't very bright, but we have to be real. This dude should have at least got her a hotel or snuck her in. Pretty weak on his part, but her plan should have been better. They both seem like dingbats at the end of the day, and the man should have known better than to invite her over before game day. They both seem goofy. A guy told me my standards are too high, so I'm going to tell you my preferences on men, and you can tell me if, if, it's, if you think my standards are too high. Alright, so the first thing is I would not feel comfortable with my boyfriend having many female friends. I would not, like, forbid him from having them, but I would not like the idea of him hanging out with them alone. So I would expect him not to do that. Then I think it's important like, that he does stuff for me, like holding the door open or carrying my bags. Not like that he has to carry my purse or something like that, but if we go shopping together, and we have to carry groceries or stuff like that. I, I'd want him to carry that for me. This is just the way I was raised. Because if I were a guy and I had a girlfriend, I would never make her carry anything heavy. Never. So I expect that from my boyfriend. Um, the next thing is I expect my boyfriend to be affectionate. I don't really like guys who are not in touch with their emotions. So I really expect him to be affectionate and be sweet to me and stuff like that because i am a very affectionate person and i i do like to give a lot of affection but i also like receiving a lot of affection so if he is like someone who doesn't like holding hands or like hugging a lot stuff like that this would not work out i'd expect my boyfriend to tell me i'm pretty and i'd expect him to give me compliments and stuff like that just i expect him to give me reassurance without me having to ask and i think this should be like a basic standard every girl has because i mean of course if you're with someone you should know that they like you obviously but you just like this is what a significant other is also for to re give you reassurance and i if you're like me if you're anything like me the only reassurance i really need and value or like think is true is their reassurance so I think reassurance from a significant other is very important and I have many girlfriends whose boyfriends don't tell them that they're pretty like at even once a week. If there's strangers that come up to you to give you compliments like randomly, why doesn't your boyfriend give you compliments at least once a week? This is for completely free and if you're anything like me, I would be all over him, I would be telling him he's handsome, he's pretty, he's a cutie, he's, a, he's my pookie, everything! everything for him but if he can't even give you a compliment a week like dump i would dump him for sure all right i've been talking too long but maybe i'll make a part two because there's more <laughs> these are the demands of a very immature woman these are things you'd expect to hear from a high schooler all her expectations are extremely vain and trivial as if she is simply looking for her disney prince charming regardless of what she brings to the table you never hear her mention a single thing she'd do for him it's all about vain compliments and carrying bags. The worst part is, this is probably the best of all the a man needs this or that for a relationship. It only gets worse from here. So how do you know when a woman's about to say something smart? Oh, I can't wait to hear this. When she starts by saying, a man once told me. <laughs> right, yep. Ha <laughs> ha, how many men does it take to open a beer? None. It should already be open when you bring it to me. Seems like a legit family if they can be that based and joke around with each other. I think that's one proud dad, and he's got a great family. Most women would get all worked up and emotional over a simple joke like this, calling her a pick-me and all kinds of other nonsense. It broke my heart that I could never 
do it for him. I'll never forget the day we sat on our couch in the living room and he was like, I just want to have a really honest conversation with you and I just want you to like tell me exactly what it is. Not this cute answer, not what you think I want to hear, none of that shit you've been telling me that you're working on it and it's just you and you in your head and all that. Like for real. And I told him the truth. It's a disconnect. Like I'm not naturally attracted to you in that way. And it's probably nothing that you could do about it. And his face, it was like, you remember Mortal Kombat when he would go in the chest and mm -hmm. snatch the heart out? That's what I felt like I did. In this whole be honest with me, I was like, the man asked me for honesty and I gave it to him, but I don't think that that's what he was thinking I was going to say. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end of our relationship. Yeah, I can imagine. Then the weird part for us, that was when the whole open relationship dynamic was introduced and almost as a means to save our relationship. And in the moment, I didn't think that that's what it was, but I later learned that that was like last ditch effort and a really, really, really bad effort because it pretty much tore us apart. I wish we had never. The part that kills me about the double standard is that when women gain weight, physically their looks change. They don't feel like wearing the heels anymore. They don't feel like wearing the Spanx and putting on the sexy dress. I don't want to do makeup anymore. They still expect men to be physically attracted to them. They still feel like, well, you're my husband. You should take me with the good or the bad. And, and that's just part of getting old. This is what happens. That lady was married for 16 years. And you mean to tell me that you have lost complete attraction to your husband to the point to where that was enough for y'all to get a divorce. Now, I know a lot of women are going to say, well, you can't force someone to be attracted to you. You're absolutely correct. But the double standard of if a man no longer finds himself attracted to his wife because she's gained weight because of the baby, oh, he's wrong. She is getting older and she don't want to dress. She don't want to be sexy. She don't want to try to attract him anymore. I shouldn't have to do that. We've been together too long. You should just accept me for how I am. But this woman says, I am not attracted to you anymore. And there's probably nothing that you can do. I guarantee you the women in the comments are going to say, well, you can't force somebody to be attracted to somebody. The double standard is horrible. Now, this man goes on to introduce having an open marriage just to save his marriage. And that still wasn't good enough. This to me is confirmation that people forget what marriage is about. It's not about you being happy 24-7, 365. It's not about you getting what you want 24-7, 365. It is a commitment and a covenant that you made to make sure that you, your family, your children, and that husband all getting what they need and being honorable to God. At the end of the day, if you're not attracted to that man anymore, buy him some new clothes. Tell him you want him to work out. Change his haircut. But just to throw 16 years away is wild to me. What she meant to say is that she found another man and needed to blame him for it. Of course, they turned to an open relationship. She simply wanted to sleep around. The chick is missing teeth and has the nerve to tell the man after a decade she's no longer attracted to him. The funny thing is, if a man says this to a woman, he's hunted down. Yet a woman says this to her husband of 16 years, they cheer her on in the comments section. What do you think on feminism? I don't support feminism. Why not? Because I think for a woman it's very important to be with a man. First of all, human is human. And second, I was born and raised in a country where women love men. And we respect them and we want to make their life happier, easier. And we love that, you know, like we love this feeling to make our men happy. And here's a big difference between European or Muslim. I'm totally fine with that cultures, but I don't know. Why do you think the women here are so brainwashed and they don't think like that anymore? American ones? Yeah. I think because they're like too strong. And to be honest, they really think that American guys are kind of scared of them. I don't know why, because they're too much independent, like, I can open a door, I can do this, and I'm like, okay, baby, you can, you know? I think it's time somebody digs deep into our culture and into our people to figure out what is going on upstairs with our women. Divorce is on the rise more than ever among Middle Easterns, whether they live in the Middle East or abroad, and just like we saw among Westernized countries like America, when the women became independent is when the family structures collapsed. They they collapsed to the point where now women are waking up and saying, you know what, 
I want a home again. I want my kids to have a healthy home. Well, the Middle Easterns are not there. We are at the point where we are collapsing because not only are women independent asking for a divorce, but we also have culture shock. A lot of our women are extremely spoiled. Yes, I said it. A lot of our women are extremely spoiled and the men cannot keep up. What is happening with our women? Thing about America that you just do not like compared to India. Cultures things, yeah, like family culture, the marriage, the relationship wise. In India, we love somebody. We try to live and marry one person for lifetime. But in U.S., they change women or men like a cloth. We want to sacrifice. Yeah. We need something. We need. We want to sacrifice. Yeah. But in this country, they don't sacrifice. When you guys go out, who usually pays for the days? Do you even have to ask? So I'm assuming it would be him. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, that's a safe assumption, unless you knew Stacy here. <laughs> yes. Very confident, demanding. So she makes me pay for everything. Yes, you're right. Under what circumstances do you cover the bill? Never. Why is that? Because I bring my value. How do you bring your value? By being myself. Okay. And entertaining this man. Yeah, we're having a great time. How do I bring my value? What do you mean? They, they, <laughs> uh, if I get invited or if she gets invited, that's probably the difference, right? You know, if she invited me out and she said, I want to take care of you, then she'd probably pay for it. But I think when we go out and I've invited her, then we'll go out and I'll pay for it. I mean, I wouldn't hang out with a guy that didn't pay. Okay. I just wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be attracted to a guy. It's not like it's all about money. Like, we have to have a great time. We have a good friendship inspire each other be there for each other but there's a lot of people in the world and but you you want to be spoiled you want to be taken care of because i bring my feminine energy to the table dude doesn't know his worth imagine if a guy said he was valuable just because he sh I think we have another customer. Hello. Hello. Hi. I saw you doing a car wash. Yeah. Yes. What are the donations for? Um, it's for my friend Lynn here. She's transgender and we're trying to raise money for her hormones, so it's for a good cause. You call that a good cause? People in general are tired of hearing about all this nonsense. Go get a job. You know, I was watching an episode of uh, You where measles came up. Wait, wait, wait. When did I mention measles? I don't know. It was on you. What? 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 What, what was on me? What are you talking about? Right? What is, the, is Raymond even hearing what I'm the saying? I never had the measles. Was on you. We never did a. <laughs> We never did a measles and vaccine episode. Am I, is this a joke? I, know. I don't even know it what you're talking about. It was on you. It was on you. I've never had, Raymond, I've never had measles. What are you talking about? This is stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You. What is you. He talking about? It's called you. I've never done a show on measles. I, I just completely give up. We gotta get it's out. It's a this. show I, I give up. called you on Netflix. There's a show called Laura Ingham on Netflix. What are you Never mind. About? I'm moving on to Adele. I can't explain this to you. A live blonde moment that she just couldn't figure out. Genuinely cannot tell if this is scripted or real. It's hard to imagine we have women this stupid out in the world. The internet is having an absolute meltdown after a revised California bill would charge any parent who doesn't affirm their child as being transgender with child abuse. In other words, if your son identifies as a girl and you don't go along with it, what? the state will now step in and remove the child from the home and limit visitations. As for what gender affirmation actually means in the law, it remains pretty vague and probably by design. What do you think? Time to leave California. What else can you do? It's gone full retard. Get out of there, guys. Do you ever lie about your height? Fuck no, I'm six foot. Six foot. Damn right. Yep. Are you? Yep. I am. Can we check that right now? Of course. All right. <laughs> oh, he's not even close to six feet, man. We got six foot is right here, man. And he has shoes on. He's looking like a cool right, five right. nine, five ten, bro. Right. But the goal is, right, is to be confident enough where you are six foot. And I am. Okay. Do you use online dating platforms? Uh, yeah, Tinder. That's about it. What do you put your height as on your Tinder profile? 
Six foot. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, bro, they don't know the difference. <laughs> Women's standards are starting to bleed into the minds of men, where they only think they have value if they meet these low IQ standards. Sad state of affairs. Gay son or thought daughter? Gay son. Why? I don't want my daughter to be like me. <laughs> Bruh. Nasty bitch. How long have you been with your man? Five and a half months. Does he know what you're wearing tonight? He definitely does. He was out with us earlier. So he doesn't have an issue with the fact that other men can like literally see the bra that you're wearing, that your boobs are kind of perky right now. We bobby pinned it. We bobby pinned as it, best so you shouldn't see, be able to see the bra. <laughs> no, he doesn't have an issue. He saw me earlier. No man should ever have an issue with how I dress. That's up to me. The only person who can have an issue are my parents. Okay. They're not here. So we went to a bar. That's why I'm just like this. Do you think that when women put themselves in environments like that, they're kind of showcasing that they're still on the market? No. I will, since I was like literally 16 years old and I would like walk to around my neighborhood, like people would come up to you and like hit on you. Like there's no situation where men feel like it's off limits. Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't matter where you are, or what you're doing. Like someone's still gonna say something or do something. She's still looking for attention and other men. This is just reality. They can lie, 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 but at the end of the day, it's all cap. Good morning, fruity. Looking juicy. Good morning, fruity. When men get treated like dirt, they really have no choice but to just walk away from the field. She might make her little jokes on TikTok now. I'm sure she will have a completely different sense of humor once the wall comes to visit her. What is the biggest right that you're fighting for today? The right to live. How do you not have the right to live right now? Because... Because people out there exist that want us gone and they're but in you're the here government. right now and you're not being attacked, you're not being targeted. You do have the right to exist. You we are existing. Are. They already have gender dysphoria. Can we really expect them to give a logical answer to the script that's being played out? Why are you always gaming? The same reason you put makeup on every day. What? To escape reality. <laughs> These are casual gamers. Real gamers game to enjoy their creativity and fun with their buddies. It has nothing to do with escaping reality. It's always surprising by how openly 304 modern women are. No shame, no guilt, thanks feminism. How empowering to ride the CC. If you don't want me to have male friends. You're going to call your male friends off if you don't want Absolutely. Oh, Fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's you and it. Are my male yeah. friends protecting and providing for me, paying my bills, providing for my family? No, what, about about me okay, what about someone like Kevin Samuels? Kevin, Kevin Samuels you mentioned that he was there for you at a point as in your my life, friend. As your friend. So like, let's say, for example, he was still here. May he so rest in peace. Let's say he was still here and you got married and your husband told you to let go of him as a friend. I, you let Kevin go of him. Samuels would tell me, I'm let not your go. friend no more. Okay, fair. Because he he's not about, unless That's the man fine. was like, no, I need you, because he'll counsel you, he'll keep you straight. A lot of men be like, yeah, keep Kevin Samuels because he going, he. This is very rare. As you can see, most women cringe at the idea of having to remove their beta orbiters. You don't get an opinion on whether Madonna is telling her truth or not. Is That's her truth. truth. What is her truth? That people are being misogynistic hang towards on, her on. and that a woman over All 45 right, just, is not allowed or permitted to be sexy sorry, there is, in the eyes James, of people like you. There is, only, there is only the truth. There's not people's versions of it. We're not on the Meghan and Harry podcast, right? <laughs> so you can't just say her truth. No, there are facts. The fact is she's done stuff to her face surgically, which means when she goes out now, we all shriek in horror. I right? think it's quite rude to say that you shriek in horror. I literally did. And it's like a Halloween costume. <laughs> but ultimately, Piers, like you've met Madonna. You, you called her rude when you She was her. incredibly rude every time I met her, but I don't hold that against her. She well, probably... it sounds like you do, no, actually. No, no, no. Just let me wrong. Women no, no. are allowed to be... They're like, allowed to be rude little madams, and she is, right? No problem at all. No, women not, are allowed to not like you, Piers. Absolutely and that fine. that doesn't give you permission not to a problem. attack them. James, of millions of people. not a problem at all. She can hate my guts. It doesn't mean I can't pass comment on her without being called immediately misogynist. But is anyone discussing how you look? And would all you the be time. okay with that? Literally, I get fat shamed all the time, even though, as you can see, I'm basically emaciated, right? <laughs> so, so... <laughs> Nothing like a little gaslighting in the morning. And since when do we take marketplace and dating advice from a dude that dates dudes? What's going on here? 
Equal pay, equal pay, equal pay. Equal pay. When the US women's soccer team faced off against a bunch of lower league players and middle-aged men from Wrexham, things were anything but equal. Here's a turnover. Jarvis, there it is. Game over. 12-0, Wrexham defeats the US women. 12-0. 12-0. The game only lasted for 40 minutes. Imagine if it had gone the full 90. 30-0. Last time something like this happened, they got thrashed by a bunch of 14-year-old boys. Joe Biden incorporated as part of his presidential campaign. He threatened to pull World Cup funding if the women weren't paid as much as the men. 12-0. But it completely decimates the notion that biological men who identify as women should be allowed anywhere near women's sports. These women live in a delusional fairy tale. Unable to comprehend, you earn a percent of what you bring in. Women's sports are usually subsidized by male sports. Most female sports have negative profits. Have you ever dated a woman with children? I have, but I was young. When I was like 22, I had a cougar. Uh huh. She had um, some younger kids. How old is your son? He's 11. He's 11. And from my experience, I, I told myself I couldn't take a woman with children seriously. Why? A child's always gonna come first. Yes. Child's gonna always come first. I'm going to always need to put you first, but I come second. And technically, he's a 10 year old boy who's gonna get into his teenage years. He's going to be in a situation where you're not my dad, right? I'm not talking about an anecdotal experience. Your son may be a sweet child, but my experience it just hasn't been the best. You have the right to feel however you want about dating a single mom. That's your prerogative, whatever. But you're on a date with a single mom. What are you talking about? Your priority here is supposed to be trying to get a third date. I don't even know why I'm on a second date with you in this moment. Realistically, yeah, we can have some fun. But taking but it serious. It's like taking it seriously is just hard because I don't have to, I don't have to settle. I've done certain things in my life to put me at a, certain echelon to date a certain top tier. I'm not saying a woman with a child isn't top tier, but like standards wise, it's like, I like to travel and be like, yo, let's go. I gotta, let's go to Miami, let's do this, let's do that. And it's like, let me call my mom and right. see if she can watch the kid. It's just no real benefit in it for me. Joya? Yes. You didn't ask for another date with him. What was the turn off? Specifically, the turn off was when I asked that question right about now. would you date a single mother? And Jacoby, you proceeded to tell me that basically you're a high value man and you are too good for a single mother. However, you did also tell me that you were raised by a single mother, mm -hmm. which is profound for me to think that a single mother is not good enough for you, but it's good enough for a woman to raise you. That's unfair. And it's very insensitive to women out there who have children. All right, so just because it's a cycle, I wanted to, wanted to continue. It doesn't have so, to continue. So what I'm saying is, it's, is that it's more about why would you cut off and say that single women are not on the same level? What you're supposed to learn from is history. So you're, you're a very what's intelligent woman. No, 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 you're a very you intelligent no, 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 no. woman. You're a very intelligent woman, right? Yes. So if you know, if, as, a, as a woman growing up, you know it's the less likelihood for you to be successful by having a child. So what you do, you be more proactive. Using condoms. What's that got to do you with your sure choice? Okay, if you're getting Can pregnant, then all right, cool. Maybe I shouldn't continue with having this child because I'm not. I, I'm not getting married. I should. I a better chance of me having a successful life. You're Jacob, speaking of me. Excuse me. So you're you were raised by a single mother. Yes. And Is I, your mother still alive? I struggle. My mom's still did alive. Did she struggle or did you struggle? Both of us struggle. Okay. So your words. Mm -hmm that echoed all around mm -hmm. social media, and I want to make sure that we have this clearly, were, I'm a high-value man. I've done things to step up my echelon, and I'm not going to settle mm -hmm. for a single mother. Yeah, Did I have sure. that correctly? I want to be clear. Yeah, we we'll, we'll sell it. Right. So what makes you think you're a high-value man? The car you drive? No, the value I put out into the world. What about your character? 
I have great character. I've built myself to basically have better choices. You want to know why? Because women can choose and make a choice. They can. They can say, I don't want to date a man that makes they like can. six figures. They can. And then what are you doing? You're but we're not a man. talking about that. Women that's not the about situation that happens. What I Listen, want to that's not the conversation. Say, I won't date a man less than 5'8". And the man could be 5'4". Do they, do they care about... What does that have to do with anything? ...exercising all of those with men? Anything. If a fat man is sitting here, he can be a fat man, right? Uh -huh. But if a fat woman is sitting here, you would say, oh, no, we're body positive. Oh, no, we can't say that. We can't. It's all about picking her up. So every time you're saying something for a man, Bro, it's down. You got, you got a lot on your back, yeah, okay? Man. So what I'm I want to be I'm clear, just not just for you, but for everybody out there, is the car you drive, your resume, your bank account, uh -huh. your accolades is not what makes you a high-value man. Definitely not. We are all not defined not. by the sum of our deeds and our character, and you, brother, are coming up to the sum of zero. Women will always try and guilt men into thinking they have to accept women who bring nothing to the table. Single mothers are bad news all around, and this woman constantly puts your cans out to try and seduce the man. How come you never protest Saudi Arabia or Russia? You only protest Western energy. Why have you never criticized Vladimir Putin or OPEC? <laughs> yeah, I've never done that. Never, ever. Well, will you do so now? Will you condemn OPEC energy? <laughs> she hasn't been given the script to do so. These young kids are being used as puppets, pumped full of emotional garbage. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Uh, Mr. Beast is giving away $2,000. You can keep it or you can double it and give it to the next person. Is it real or is it fake? It's, it's real. You get Do I get to pick my own next person? <laughs> no. No, then I would keep it. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna take it? Yeah, is double it real? It. No, so what? just double, double it. Double it and give it to someone other than myself? Someone could have 4,000, just double it. Double. Or double. I so, right? double it. Double it. Just double it, K. No, or else, or I can have it. You could literally <laughs> double so, it and give it to somebody to get 4,000. Why would you not do that? Because I wouldn't have the 2,000. But somebody else would have 4,000. That could be a, somebody could get a so car with so you guys doubling it? Yeah, okay. double it. Double, double it. it. Double it. Okay, we going. Who you going to double it to? <laughs> okay. So are you taking the 4,000 or are you going to double and give it to somebody else? Oh, and then he's going to say, oh, I'm going to take the 4,000. I mean, I'll take the 4,000. You want the 4,000? See, that's what I'm saying. This is a scam. It's a scam? <laughs> you just convinced me. You just tried to say I was going to double it. So should I double it too? Yeah. If that double, they get, a person gets 8,000. Yeah, you take the 4K. It. I'll take it. Okay, you guys have a good one. You have a good one too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Beast. <laughs> Give us your. Just gave him four thousand dollars. She doubled it and she gave it to him. Not a bad prank. Obviously, they are both in on it. I think anyone in the current economy would take that two K. Okay, quickly. So I, I misunderstand. Are we saying that two plus two? If you say it's four, that's racist. I mean, that sounds like we may be mischaracterizing it. What? Uh, if you can quickly sum it up. No, that's not mischaracterizing it at all. It's math is basically racist under this ideology because it says there is no such thing as an objective reality. So four might not be the right number. Two plus two might actually equal. Math has fat phobia and it's racist. Next, it'll be creating a fascist army. Look, we found some people in a tent. Are these yours? Uh, that's granddad. This is his birthday present. <laughs> oh, we're going to speak to granddad and his birthday present. Are you granddad? I'm granddad, yeah. And are you birthday present? Uh, no, I'm his grandson. What is the world coming to? What a strange question, especially around kids and family. Society is done for. I think we are ready for the asteroid. Watch him, just watch and learn, watch and learn. Oh, hey, what's your favorite color? Green. Oh, we're on the same page. I like that too. It's my color too, you know? <laughs> A lot of women nowadays is always about what a man can do for them, what a man can provide to them. What can you do in return? And I'm sorry to say your is not valuable. There are plenty out here. Alex, thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video, guys. Till next time.